many days in your life can you remember? As you grow older and lonelier, you remember more and more of them. This day started for me like every new day. And then I noticed what had happened to the flowers. And I felt somehow today would be different. Mrs. Leslie! Oh, you're up early this morning, Crawford. Well, I was just coming over to see you. The most terrible thing has happened. The most terrible things are always happening to you, Crawford. <laughs> but this is really terrible. You know that lovely get just what... Not so loud. My rumors aren't up yet. Well, that bouffant I made for the little Creighton girl. Well, she's up in Santa Barbara to be married in the mission there. And her mother just called. And the aisle in the mission is too narrow for the hoops. Well, can't you walk sideways like a crab? <laughs> Everything's a joke to you. <laughs> but I, I have to go up there, and I might not be back until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what to do about Pixie. She can't stay alone until that hour. Well, when I was 16, I didn't need any babysitter. She has a date tonight after dinner, and if I could send over some chops for her, if, if it's all right. Crockman, you kill me. A girl old enough to wear a sweater, and she can't even broil a chop. I'd be ashamed at not having taught her. Pixie, set your baby. Yeah. Well, you send her over, and I'll try and keep everything on a high plane. I won't even let her see me set the table. I'll just let her think it comes that way. Well, I'll leave a note for her. Mrs. Leslie. I, I don't want to wake her. Good morning, Miss Rowland. Don't you worry about Pixie. You just run along and be the Scaparelli of Santa Barbara. I'm going to Santa Barbara. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you, Mrs. Leslie. Oh, that's all right. Kaufman was just going. Bye, Kaufman. Everybody's up early today. The gentleman in the room next to mine, I think he's sick. He's been up checking for about an hour or so. Oh, well, why didn't you say that? Well, I said he was sick. But sick can mean anything. He'll get over it. They always do. But he sounds really ill. Appendicitis sometimes starts that way. Take my advice, Miss Rowland. Let sleeping dogs lie. And hangovers hang. But how do you know he has a hangover? The way he drove in here last night. Take a look outside. There's a tire mark across every flower along the drive. Well, aren't you going to go upstairs and see what it really is? Oh, I know what it is. I learned the hard way. People who play nursemaids to drunks are fools. I had a father who was one. Yes? Crestview 54124. Four. Oh, all right. Just hold the wire. I'll tell them. The pools. Oh, Mrs. Leslie, is it for us? Yes, it's the hospital. They want you to come just as soon as you can. Tell them, please. We'll be right out. Is it about Karen, dear? Yes, dear. We've got to hurry. I gave them the message. They'll be over just as soon as they can. Poor man, I feel more sorry for him than her somehow. There's nothing can be done about it. Their daughter's had another sinking spell. The hospital doesn't think she'll last the day. It must be unbearable. I've never lost anyone. You get over it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Leslie. Oh, that's all right, Miss Rowan. You get over it, eventually. Mr. McKay? Mr. McKay? Mr. McKay? Mr. McKay? What do you want? I'm Nadine Rule, next door. I want to help you. Uh, have you got a temperature? Look, leave me alone, lady. I'll be okay. I have some tea in my room. It might help. No, no, thanks. No tea. Uh, I'll be okay now. Tea, uh... Um... Uh, I, I don't care for any thanks. Maybe this will help. Uh, what time is it? Around 7.30. You're pretty darn nice. I'll have to do this for you sometime. Don't worry about it. It's been done for me. You? Uh, I wake you up? I had to get up early anyway. It's a big day for me, I hope. I have an audition. I'm sorry I woke you up. I'm sorry to be a nuisance. You sound like a man with a reason to get fractured. I've got reasons I haven't even used yet. You better go now. 
Go on, beat us. Oh, uh, did I say thanks? It's all right. You're nice. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Remind me to meet you sometime. Can't take advice, huh? I can't take suffering, even other people's. In my business, you can't afford to get involved. You've got to be a spectator. I've never seen you do this before. Well, it's for the fools. I thought you and your husband would like a little coffee before you left. Well, that's thoughtful, Mrs. Leslie, but we'd better not take the time. Herbert's ready. And... But it only takes a minute. We'd better hurry. Thank you so much. It's very thoughtful of you. I hope everything turns out all right. Thank yes. you. Try and pour some of this down, Mr. McKay. I'll try. Black, no sugar and cream. And keep the door open. Good morning, Mrs. Leslie. Good morning. I, um... I brought the coffee cups down. Thanks. She's a nice girl, isn't she? Good instincts. I was in no condition to tell. The coffee helped. I noticed you didn't even cut yourself shaving. Mr. McKay, you probably don't realize it, but when you drove in here last night, I don't think you hit the cement once. You know, flowers don't grow wild, even in California. I'm sorry. How much? Oh, I don't expect you to pay for them. I'd just like you to be a little more careful in the future. You know, it takes time and effort to grow flowers. I'm sorry, Mrs. Leslie. I'll be more careful. I wish you would. They add so much to the appearance of a house. Beverly Hills wouldn't be nearly as lovely without its flowers. Mrs. Leslie, whenever I'm stopped for speeding or something, I always tell the cop, OK, give me the ticket, but no lecture, please. So tell me what you want. Money, blood, just tell me, don't lecture. You're quite a man, aren't you, Mr. McKay? You're not afraid of anything. Cops or landladies or anything in the world. All I meant was... Okay. I'll be more careful about the flowers next time, Mrs. Leslie. I'm sorry. I'm watching. Isn't that the car I gave your brother? Be nice to him, darling. For mother's sake. Happy birthday, Mom. Landy. I knew you'd come. I told Felice you'd come. What's this? Well, open it. Landy, you haven't said hello to Lewis and your sister. Uh, hi, Felice. Lewis. Try and be more pleasant. This is Amy Moi. When you were in the perfume department, I remember that was your favorite. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you. Land, darling, where have you been hiding? You look fine, sis. Real nervous. It's just an expression. I wish you'd come back to live with us, Lanny. Lewis is terribly upset about the way you ran out. I've never seen him so hurt. I'll see he gets a purple heart. Get the chip off your shoulder, Land. Try and understand Lewis. He wants to love you. He wants to help you. He wants. He wants. How about what I want? Land, dear. Now look, I spent two years in Korea taking orders. And nearly a year in this place, jumping every time he snapped his fingers. I can't play bridge and golf and scrabble with him day and night and accomplish anything. I've got to work, do something. I don't want to be kept. You don't understand him, darling. Lewis is lonely. Then why did you break up his home? He had a family he was getting along with. Don't you talk that way to me. Land, why do you fight with us? We love you. I lie awake nights wondering where you are. Mother, you can know where I am every night if you'll come with me. Get out of here. Will you do it, Mom? Mother. Mother. Yes, Lewis? Then why don't you come up and see Mother's birthday gift from all of us? I bought my own birthday gift this year, thanks. With what? 
As long as you ask, I hocked one of those wristwatches you gave me. And how do you plan living after you've hocked all the other things you've gotten out of me? I don't like the way you put that. Things I've gotten out of you. Land, dear. When he's got his pockets full of pawn tickets, he'll come back here. But he'll have to change his attitude. Or do you want to start changing it now, son? Oh, come on, Lewis. You bought my sister and you've got a mortgage on my mother. But you can't write a check big enough to get even a piece of me. I belong to myself. One of these days, I'll get your watch out of Hawk. Come by then and maybe get my mother out of the pawn shop, too. Come on, mother. Goodbye, Mom. I'll call you. Take that creep. All she's got to do is change her pants. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh, you're impatient. It only took a minute. Will you help me pick these up, honey? Well, I can't. My friends are in a hurry. But it's, it's for your dinner tonight. You're eating with me, you know. I know. My mom left a note. Well, Mrs. Leslie, you sure rate high with a hot rod set, don't you? A fine way for kids to act. In my day, <laughs> my day, these are my days, whether I like them or not, because I made them what they are. When does a person start building her future? When did I start? How did I start? Daddy, let me stay out late. For tomorrow is our wedding day. Can't the baby kind of celebrate? Kiss the boys goodbye. Daddy, let me wear the mink. What's the difference what the neighbors think? Let the baby linger on the brink. Kiss the boys goodbye. And while I'm kissing them sentimentally, keep the liberal point of view. Because I'm breaking it to them gently. That my heart belongs to you. So, Daddy, please remember this. That tomorrow starts a life of bliss. Let me show them what they're gonna miss. Kiss the boys goodbye, bye-bye. Kiss the boys goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a little ditty I learned at Miss Pringle's school for young ladies, just before the cops raided the joint. <laughs> I like her sexy stuff the best. Don't you, Barney? Yes, baby, that's the stuff. And now, if the boys of the band... Band? <laughs> if Daniel and his musical lions will oblige with some background, here's a song about which the composer Beethoven once said... <laughs> Stop already. <laughs> Should've done this, Barney. It isn't for George. Why not? A night in the town? It's good for him. How's your drink holding up, George? Fine. I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Funny, but when you're near me I'm in the mood for love Heaven is in your eyes Bright as the stars we're under Oh, is it any wonder I'm in the mood for love Why stop to think of whether This little dream might fade We've put our hearts together Now we are one 
I'm not afraid If there's a cloud Sing it, above baby. Hi, Bon If it should rain, we'll let it But for tonight, forget it I'm in the mood for Maybe we'd better call it tonight. Oh, it isn't even three yet. What's the rush? You don't get to New York very often, do you, George? Often enough. Relax, Mr. Finley. George is a big boy. He can take care of himself. Well, hi, Bonnie. I haven't seen you for a long time. Well, you know, Washington keeps a man pretty busy oh, these sure. days. Say hello to Joe and Precious. Hi. Hi. And may I present a couple of friends of mine. This is Mort Finley, Vivian Keeler. Mr. Do do? Finley. And this is George. Uh, Leslie. George Leslie, Vivian Keeler. How do you do, Mr. We Leslie? We enjoyed your performance, Mr. Keeler. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad we stayed. We were going to leave earlier. Oh, come on, Finney. Just one dance. Sure, one at least. Come, come on, on, Joe. <laughs> Sit down, Vivian, and keep George out of trouble. He doesn't dance. <laughs> Come on, sit down, Mr. Leslie. Bonnie's fun, isn't he? It depends on your definition of fun. What's yours? I'm working on it. Would you like a drink? Oh, no, not for me. Maybe not for you, either. Is that what Bonnie meant when you said about my keeping you out of trouble? You have a nice laugh. And you have a nice smile. You don't look like the kind that'd get in trouble. Do you? Get in trouble, I mean. Depends on your definition of trouble. Are you working on that, too? No. Hi, Keith. Long time no see. The language of the local jungle. I bet I can give you a definition of trouble. It's when you walk into a nightclub, one that you wouldn't have picked yourself, and suddenly some paper hat character starts toward you trying to get laughs to pay the rent with a big, fat spotlight and a gleam. That's trouble, isn't it? That's trouble. Thanks. For passing your table? Oh, I wouldn't want you in the spotlight, Mr. Leslie. You give the place too much class. The boss doesn't deserve it. If you want another drink, go ahead, order one. But I warn you, this bartender's idea of a highball is giving an ice cube an alcohol rub. Leo? Clap. That's a terrible word, isn't it? In a village smoke pit, you meet a lot of guys, but very few men. When you meet one, it's only natural that you'd accept a luncheon date the next day. Of course, it would be drizzling, and I couldn't get a cab. So I was a little late. Madame? I'm looking for a gentleman. Well, could you give me a... I couldn't help but notice the cigarette stubs in the ashtray. I knew I hadn't been that late. But from the looks of things, he'd been that anxious. And I was glad. I'd been wondering how he'd greet me. You know, when you meet a person for the second time, so often it's hard to recapture the mood of your first meeting. But not with Mr. Leslie. He was easy to talk to. And I liked him. But he seemed to have something special that he wanted to say. Over coffee, he suggested a walk in Central Park. Oh, don't forget your book. Thank you. 
You know, you haven't said a word since we left the restaurant. You don't talk very much, do you? I'm a listener. Very important part of society, listen. Without us, who would the talkers talk to? Each other? Talkers don't listen to themselves, much less other talkers. Well, for a listener, that's quite a lot of gab. I may not say anything again until June 14th. But how else could I let you know? Know what? That I like you. It's coming through. I'm very flattered. Well, it doesn't take much to please you. Oh, no, no. It takes a great deal. Flowers, mountains, pretty shoes, children, trees, and the smell of hot bread. How about you? When I find out, I'll let you know. The long, hungry search, huh? One of those deep men. You think there's going to be a war? There's always going to be a war. Why always? The long, hungry search. Man doesn't know what pleases him yet. You see how lucky you are, you know. The other night, a couple of soldiers came into the club. One of them was a southern boy, just a kid. He was so excited about his first night in New York. And I asked him if it was going to be a war. And he said, you're darn right there is, lady. They're not fighting us for no peacetime, army. And then I said, well, who do you think we'll be fighting? And he thought for a long time, and then he said very seriously, well, I can't say right off, but you can bet it'll be one of them foreign countries. Would you like to go to California? Oh, I should say so. Every year about this time, I start doodling palm trees. I've dreamed of a job in California, but they only book high price acts out there. Do you make much money? Oh, I make 200 a week when I work. <laughs> That much? Is it? Well, what I do, yes. Well, what I spend, no. You make a lot? Yes. Doing what? Manufacturing. Oh. Suppose we get a cab. Why? Where are we going? California. But I have to go to Washington first. Wait a minute. You mean you weren't kidding back there? You were really serious about my going? Well, I'm usually too serious. That's what a couple of specialists tell me. I have to have a vacation. Could you leave in, say, four days? I'll pay your salary for as long as you're gone. I tell you what, let you and me start a pen pal club. We'll keep in touch that way. Please, don't be angry. I, I don't mean it that way. Companion is what I want. We'll even be chaperoned. The last time I was chaperoned, she wound up with my date. You don't believe me about just friends. Are you sick or something? No, I'm perfectly well. Tired. Nerves, I think they call it. Sorry, Vivian. Sorry for what? My invitation should at least have had the chance of growing out of a friendship. Penn Station, please. Why did you ask me to go with you, Mr. Leslie? Because I have to get away for six weeks. And I don't know anyone else I could... I'd want to ask. Oh. Please don't make me ask you again if you'll come, baby. It was difficult enough the first time. All right. You've got yourself a companion, Mr. Leslie. Plays piano, sings risque songs, has wardrobe, and will travel. And there's something more than that. Oh, I know what I'm letting myself in for. No, you'll have to contribute whatever honesty there is to our relationship. Well, I'm no Boy Scout, but I'm prepared. Here's enough for two weeks. There's nothing binding. You, you're not happy after the first few days. I'll uh, send the tickets up to your apartment this afternoon. And a note on making connections in Los Angeles. It's up to Coastal. Way. Well, goodbye to California. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Leslie. You're lost in the crowd of a big city. See you out west, Father. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Leslie. Rick, I'm going to California. Oh, you are? Yes, Monday, for six weeks. Who's the guy? Never mind, it's not what you think. But you've got to let me off the hook. I'll make up the six weeks. You got a little piece of paper me, Vivi. It says your work. You ain't no Hilda guy, but you work anyway. Look, Rick. Sam, please. Well, Rick, I'm going to go anyway. You'll find someone to fill in the six weeks, and when I get back, you go, don't come back, because you won't be working here. You break a contract with me, you work no place, ever. Follow me? Well, that's a chance I've got to take. You got a contract. She ain't going. I wondered how I should act. I decided to let him make the ground rules. After all, it was his ballpark. Hi, I just came to make a delivery. You forgot this. Glad to have it back. Oh, you look wonderful. All tan. I've had nothing to do for three long days but lie in the sun and wait for you. So this is California. Santa Hilda. I never heard of it myself till two weeks ago. Jim, would you get the luggage, please? Certainly a well-kept secret. I thought it was going to be so lush, all palm trees. Maybe I should have been more explicit than just California. Either way, you were pretty certain I'd come, weren't you? I'm old enough not to be certain of anything. Vivian, this is Jim. He, uh, he goes with the house. Welcome to California, Mrs. Leslie. Mrs. Leslie, had he told Jim that? Or was it just Jim's idea? I didn't know enough about Mr. Leslie to be sure. All I knew was that he needed me, and that was enough. It's longer this way, but the ocean drive is nicer. Camilla will probably have lunch ready when we get there, won't you, Jim? Yes, sir. You'll like the house, Mrs. Leslie. It's a wonderful place for a holiday. Is it, Mr. Leslie? It can be. It's up to us. Mr. Leslie. It's simply beautiful. Excuse me, Mrs. Leslie. When would you like luncheon, sir? Oh. Well, that's up to you. Maybe after we, uh, after swim. Yes, that'll be fine, Camilla. Uh, yes, ma'am. I suppose in the future you'll want to make out the menus? And what about the shopping? Well, I'm on my vacation. Why don't you, why don't you tend to all? Thank you. 
There's just one thing to remember. Mr. Leslie likes just a whisper of garlic in his salad dressing. Yes, ma'am. Just a whisper. I'm not sure I took the course for this. Mrs. Leslie, madam. You must have. You remembered my instructions to the waiter. Well, shall we... Uh... What? Go for a swim. Now? Why not? I'll show you upstairs. You can change. Well, that's my room. And this is the study. Which I don't intend to use. And this... This is your room. My room. Oh, it isn't real. It can't be. It's like something out of one of those House Beautiful magazines. You know, let the sea be part of you. I'm glad you like it. I wonder what the poor people are doing today. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to stand this. You brought your bathing suit, of course. You were really serious about swimming? Why do you always question me? Oh, all right. I'll get ready. Meet you on the beach. Fine. <laughs> Hurry. Sometimes I think that's the first time I really saw George Leslie. He was just a little boy, one of those poor little rich kids who didn't have anyone to play with. Hi. How's the water? Isn't it cold? No, not really. Looks kind of cold to me. Come on, let's go for a swim. I like to go in gradually. All right to leave my shoes here? Sure. Won't the tide come in? No. Oh, oh, it's freezing. <laughs> The nights are starting to get cool, even down here. Mm-hmm. Somebody said it about California, and it's true. No matter how hot it gets in the daytime, there's nothing to do at night. I'm sorry. What would you like to do? How far is it to Los Angeles? About two hours' drive. You don't want to drive down there, do you? Oh, no. What's doing there? Speak me again. Would you rather I didn't read? No, don't be silly. Maybe we could do some surf cast. I had you pegged as the indoor type. All we've done for the past few weeks is swim and fish and ride and run. Mr. Leslie, you're the Buffalo Bill of the beaches. Quiet night around the little campfire ain't gonna hurt this old Calamity Jane none. Calamity Jane was Wild Bill Hickok's girl. Are you bored? Oh, no, I'm just catching my breath. I haven't spent so much time outdoors since I was dispossessed in 1934. Don't you ever read about anything except the Civil War? It's been my hobby for 20 years. For the love of Robert E. Lee. Why? For the love of Robert E. Lee. Grant, Jackson, all the others. To me, they're as alive as anyone I know. But where's the suspense when you know how the war ends? Maybe you're looking for a book that says the South won. The South won by losing, baby. It kept America together. And as for suspense, it's full of suspense. More than any movie. More excitement than any mystery story from Poe to Chandler. Consider Jackson's genius. Imagine it transferred to the West. Do you think Grant would ever have been heard of oh, if Jackson... <laughs> Hold it, General. You sound like the H.V. Countenborn of 1864. 
I don't know a darn thing you're talking about. Believe it or not, that war was before my time. I bore everybody with my war. That's what a friend calls it, my personal war. Says I bury myself in it to escape today. Is she right? You know a lot about me, don't you? Oh, it's not exactly knowing. Most of the time, it's just feeling. It's probably for Jim or, or Camilla. Why are you so interested in soldiers, Mr. Leslie, honey? Their ability to fight, I suppose. To make a statement for their beliefs. Maybe because I find it so difficult to do that myself. Do you think men fight to make statements? I don't. I think they fight to protect what they have. Because if they don't, they get killed by some other soldiers who are trying to take it away from them. I guess I'm a cynic. On the contrary, Bibi. I admire your ability to reduce life to such simplicity. Pardon me, Mr. Leslie. There's a long-distance call for you. Thank you. It's nice having you here, Mrs. Leslie. Oh, thanks, Camilla. Has Mr. Leslie been resting well? Why wasn't he before I came? I don't think so, ma'am. Of course, it's none of my business, but we're quite fond of you folks, and we hope you're enjoying your vacation. Oh, we're enjoying it enormously, Camilla. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Night. No, keep it. I'll get another one. Oh, no, no. You take it. Whew. I'm sorry. It's all this uncanned air. You're not going to bed. Oh, please. My eyelids feel as if they weigh 40 pounds apiece. All right, go to sleep. Have a pretty dream. Good night, Mr. Leslie. Good night, baby. Was bothering him. It was like that afternoon in the restaurant all over again. There was something on his mind. Looks as if you've been fighting the Battle of Fredericksburg right in here. Oh, you're soaking. You ought to change into something else. Come on, I'll straighten your bed for you. I'll take care of it. Go back to sleep. Go on. Go on. Go on. I thought you might like some hot milk. You're very good to me, Bibby. That's what I'm here for. Now, come on, sit down. Drink your milk.
Why don't we make this a breakfast? In a couple of more hours, we can be out trolling, get some fish for dinner. All right. About that phone call this evening. Thanks for not asking any questions. One of your charms is your fascinating disinterest in everything about me that relates to the outside. I'm very grateful. Oh, I'm only human. It's not disinterest, but when there's something you want me to know, you'll tell me. I want you to know that I'm very fond of you. Scramble. so much fish, my stomach's going in and out with the tide. <laughs> Have some wine. Mm. Let's drink a toast to all the fish we didn't catch. That's to every fish in the Pacific. To their help. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, let's, let, let's do it this way. I saw it once in the movies. To the fish. Here's something I saw once. Go on. Go on, go ahead. <laughs> it's fun. Feels to everyone's urge to break something. <laughs> Mr. Hackley, some more glasses, please. Listen, mister, them glasses cost 26 cents a piece. Bring all you got. Celebrating, Mr. Hackley. Won't you join us? Yes, come on, join us. There's, there's nothing for me to celebrate. Another toast to the fishes. And to the fishermen. See bass dinners. You'll have to pay for them glasses. Now look here. I know. I, Twenty-six I... cents per glass. Certainly, Mr. Hatch. No more glasses, Mr. Hackley. What a shame. There's your bill, Mister. Three dollars and twelve cents extra for glasses. If I pay for them, they belong to me, don't they? Broken or not? I reckon so. We'll sweep them up and put them in a bag, and I'll take them along. They belong to him. Keep the chain. Oh, thank you, mister. And here you are, sir. Would you mind telling me what you're going to do with that? We're yogis. We sleep on it. Come on, dear. Let's make our beds. dinners and cheap wine. Anything can be fun if you have someone to share it with. Who taught you how to laugh, baby? You must have had wonderful parents. I had a wonderful mother. If she'd been married to anybody else but my father, she might still be alive. I had to teach myself to laugh. I was pretty well cried out before I was 15. I had to come here. You didn't. But you came, and I'll be eternally grateful. You've done more for me than my doctors, my pills, my everybody. How can I thank you? For the first time in my life, somebody's made me feel as if I had a purpose. That's thanks enough. 
Sunday, I'm going to that little church in town and try to take up where I left off 15 years ago. I saw his face and I almost died. I think it's the funniest thing I <laughs> what he could do. May I get you something? Oh, yes, I'd like some coffee up in my room. There was a long distance call from Mr. Leslie, and I wanted to tell him not to answer it. At least not that night. Funny how you get hunches about some things. <laughs> Yes? Oh, come on in. Maybe. Coffee? No, thanks. I'm afraid I'll have to go back. You mean now? Tonight? Jim will drive me into Los Angeles. I have to make a 6 o'clock plane in the morning. I tried to stall. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Why don't you stay on? I have the house till the 15th. No, I'll go back with you. On another plane, of course. I hope we can do this again. Maybe next year. Vivi, you're the best companion I've ever known. And Lee was the best general, Mr. Leslie, but they paid off on Grant. Please, Vivi. It was wonderful. Really wonderful. That's what makes saying goodbye so much harder. Yes, an engagement starts out one thing and ends up another, all right. This I hadn't expected. He'd given me less than six weeks, and I knew then that I'd given him all my life. Mrs. Leslie! Mrs. Leslie! Miss Leslie. Yes? I wonder if I could ask a favor of you. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. The piano in the living room. I was wondering if you'd mind if I use it this afternoon. Oh, that old thing? It hasn't been used in so long, I don't even know whether it's in tune anymore. But you're welcome to use it. I didn't know you were a musician, Mr. McKay. <laughs> I'm not, but uh, I can get an accompanist. Oh, you sing? I had no idea you were in show business. You don't seem like the type. I dance. At least I'm trying to. Ballroom stuff. Anything to make a couple of bucks. Oh, well, dancing's nice, too. I used to love to dance. Well, now we'll see how this sounds. We usually rehearse at my partner's house, but her mother's sick today. If it's out of tune, we can use a record player. Sounds all right to me. Sound OK for you? Oh, my partner's no Paderewski. He won't mind. Hi. Hi. Oh, don't you look nice, Miss Rowan. You know Mr. McKay, don't you? Hi. I did tell you to remind me to meet you sometime, didn't I? Now we've met. Again. <laughs> Aren't you going to be late for your appointment, Miss Rowan? I'll get a cab at the corner. Maybe I can drop you off. Oh, thanks, but I'm going to Hollywood. Well, I'm going to Hollywood myself? Well, it's the least I can do after this morning. <laughs> All right. Why don't you go through the kitchen? It's shorter. Good luck. Thanks. See you later. Uh, TV center, you said? Yes, please. You uh, doing a show there? No, I'm auditioning. Caslin's starting a new series, Private Eye Stuff. They're looking for a secretary. Secretary? Well, you know, those private eye secretaries. Well, here. She walked in and her hips moved like swans on a silver lake. Her blue-black hair gleaming like a raven's wing. <laughs> How about that? That kind of secretary you could be. I'll buy a 21-inch set if you get the part. If I get the part? I'd better get the part. Thanks. 
so much, Mr. McKay. Let me know how you make out. Good luck. Hey, McKay! Hey, Fred, what are you doing around here? Agents can't sell talent to television? And speaking of talent, who was that? Oh, uh, she lives at my place. It's a rooming house. Yeah, sure. What's her name? Nadine Rowland. Say, Fred, remember that act I was telling you about? We've got it in good shape now, I think. Good enough to show. Nadine Rowland, sure. Used to hang around with Gillis Kemp. Real crazy dames, kid. What happened to her? Gillis got a penthouse on the strip. Say, uh, when do you think you can have a look at it, Fred? At what? My act. Oh, anytime you say, kid, if you bring the Roland doll along. Really? How about this afternoon? No, make it tonight. Okay. There's a room at the house we can use. About 7.30, okay? Yeah, 7.30, 8. Just be sure Roland's there. Oh, she has an agent, Harry Wiley. Look, I ain't always an agent. When the sun goes down, believe it or not, I turn into a man. Okay. I'll call phone the landlady. If it's all right, I'll call you. I can't promise you nothing. Don't forget Roland. Oh, I have to get this part, Mr. Wiley. I've just got to. It means so much. You just relax, honey. Relax. You'll be fine. <laughs> we know you can act, don't we? I'll be in the control booth with Mr. Kessler. All right, Mr. Roland. Stu Harkness, please. Miss Roland, this is Stu Harkness, your leading man. We're ready any time now. All right, now let's not worry about your moves. Just the lines. Stu, you're at the desk, please. Miss Rowland, you'll make an entrance. All right, stand by, everybody. Stu, take it. What's the deal on Corpel, Wiley? We'll talk about him later, Mr. Kazan. Let's look at Miss Rowland now, huh? Was that a shot? Nobody's popping champagne this time of day, sweetheart. The Gringo mob. They sent a torpedo to rub you out. Oh, Big Joe, you gotta get out of town. Blow this bird before they blast you. Nobody blasts Let's you. Let's have a close-up on the girl. Yes, sir. Sam. Remind Lorene to get another note off before I leave for the springs. Big time. When Big Joe takes on a caper, sweetheart, he sticks till it's cracked or it cracks him. Look, Big Joe, I'm only a secretary, but I got a nose for trouble. Reminds me of that girl who did the Glow Mall commercials. What was her name, Sam? Oh, yeah, Farrell, that was it. Did commercials and drove a big convertible. You still driving yours, Jay? Oh, I traded in one of those little foreign cars to race around town in. We get our jollies, Joe. Uh, never mind about Lorene. I better call New York direct. Mr. Kazan, what about the girl? She's not the type. Oh, you big blind bat. Can't you see I'm nuts about you? Okay, kid, sure. thank you. Wrap it up, boy. Jasmine, you're missing a bet. Rona looks the part. She can play it, I tell you. Tell her what you want. Let her try it again. If she had it, it would come through to me, Wally. I want a whole woman for this part. No starlet stuff. All ankles and chest, no heart. Your girl's fluff, that's all. Just fluff. Sam, get a hold of that uh, feral dame. Maybe she can play it. Reminds me of this Roland kid. Oh, good evening, Pixie. I was just thinking of calling you. Well, I told you I'd be here. What are we having for dinner? I don't like chops. Put your things in my room and then come and sit right down here. It's all ready. How is skating today? All right. Yeah. Nice cold roast ham and a nice big salad. It's such a warm evening. Sit down, dig in. I'll get you some nice iced tea. I don't like tea. Iced tea? Well, mi milk, maybe. Milk? Come on, sit down anyway. Aren't they pretty? Beautiful things make you feel beautiful inside. Yeah, have a hot buttered roll. Uh, do you have a root beer? Yes, I have. Oh, uh, well? Well what, Pixie? Well, well, can I have a root beer? Yes, surely. It's right in the icebox. Well, I can't get out. I haven't eaten anything, Pixie. I guess I'm not hungry. 
That's the trouble with you children nowadays. How do you expect your brains to work if you're undernourished? My brains work. Turn on the radio, hmm? Huh? Do you like music, Pixie? It's all right, I guess. Well, good music, I mean, like Beethoven and Offenbach. Who? Dizzy Gillespie. Oh, it's all right, I guess. Who's your favorite orchestra? Gee, I don't know. It certainly is warm tonight. I wonder if your mother found the weather any cooler up in Santa Barbara. Gee, I don't know. Well, it should be cooler there. Have you ever been to Santa Barbara yet? Uh-uh. What places have you been, Pixie? You ever been abroad? Mm, San Diego, I guess. Gee, I don't know. Oh, no. Been all over, I guess. Well, I mean foreign places. I mean to uh, Ketchikan, maybe, or Madagascar. Tijuana? Gee, I don't know. Has Iris next door got a television? Gee, I don't know. Iris's little baby had measles. Did you ever have measles, Pixie? Gee, I don't know. Measles are unpleasant. They're so itchy, you know? They're very unpleasant to have. Well, I better change my clothes before the kids come. But I have strawberry shortcake for dessert. Berries make me break out. Uh, can I use your shower? Yes, Pixie, you may. It's in the bedroom, right through there. You sure we're supposed to pick her up here? Next door, she said, at Leslie's rooming house. Here comes a creep now. Good evening. I'm Mrs. Leslie. Where's Pixie? I said my name was Mrs. Leslie. Hi. I presume you're Oswald Fogelmeister. Uh -huh. I'm Buddy Boy. How do you do, Buddy? Now we're introduced, aren't we? We're supposed to pick up Pixie. Yes, I know. Who's the devoted couple in the back seat? That's Diana and Paul. They're going steady. Oh, at least. Don't they ever come up for air? Hey, Tyrone. Put on the brakes. In my day, people only acted that way with the shades down, the lights out, and the neighbors away for the weekend. What's with her? Hey, where's Pixie? We're in a hurry. Yes, I see you are. She's not joining you this evening. What do you mean? Pixie's not coming with us? Not tonight. Ah, uh, I bet she's not even there. Who does that old queen think she is anyway? <laughs> I'm almost ready. We're giving a sort of a little party here tonight, Pixie. One of my roomers, Mr. McKay, is a dancer, and he's going to show his act to an agent. He said he'd like an audience. Would you like to stay? I already have a date. No, I'm afraid you haven't. I sent them away. You did what? Sent them away? When? Just now. They've gone. You've got a lot of nerve, Mrs. Leslie. It didn't seem safe to me. They're my best friends. And you've got some sweet nerve doing that. Diane's father is a very wealthy man, and Buddy's mother has a diamond brooch, and they're very well known in society. Does your mother know any of them? What difference does that make? And besides, what's it any business of yours? Boy, gee, what nerve! Pixie, put that down. My mother lets me. I don't believe it. I take my responsibilities very seriously. Tonight, I'm your mother. How could you be anybody's mother? Why, what I heard, you weren't even married. Of course I was married. Then where's a picture of your husband? Who was he? Mom says you're just an old maid pretending you were married. Shame to own up to you, you never did get yourself a man. If that's your mother's opinion, I don't imagine she'd fancy your repeating it. It's the truth, isn't it? Sure it's the truth. So don't you tell me what to do. I bet I know where I can find my friends, too.
Go on, Pixie. Go on, run, find your friends. I won't stop you. You're right. I'm not your mother. I'm not anybody's mother. How could I be? I'm not anybody's anything. Because once I ran, too. All the way to California. The years since I'd seen him hadn't been too easy for me, thanks to Rick. He blackballed me in the clubs around New York, and I'd had to pick up club dates wherever I could. Jersey, upstate, the island, one-nighters, anything to keep going until Mr. Leslie's phone call. Oh, I've had a very busy year this past year, Mr. Leslie. I've been doing a lot of reading. History books. Ask me anything you want to know about William Lowndes Yancey. Where he was born, when he died, anything. Go on, ask me. Baby, you astonish me. You mean you really enjoyed reading about him? Of course. Well, if you like that, you'd love Corporal Cy Clegg and his part. Written by Wilbur F. Hinman, late Lieutenant Colonel, 65th Regiment, Ohio Veterans Volunteer Infantry. I read it. Read it? You memorized it. I also read uh, Rebel War Clerk's Diary and The Wearing of the Gray, and Jeff Davis's memoirs. I even read your precious Romans Beauregard. <laughs> Oh, Vivi. Poor Vivi. Club dates aren't enough, are they? For instance, how much rent do you pay on your apartment? Fifty dollars. Okay. There's phone, utilities, laundry, eating. Where do you manage pin money? Oh, I just buy plain pins, Mr. Leslie, honey, not platinum ones. But suppose you were sick. You couldn't work for one reason or another. Bibby, you're not secure. I'm secure six weeks out of the year. How many women can say that? You're sure there are fish down there? The way you live the rest of the year. You're on thin ice, Vivi, thin ice. Oh, well, I'm a good skater. You should have seen me when I was a kid. I was the best skater on the lake. I used to love the winters because that meant skating. I started telling him things I'd never spoken of to anyone before, about a house hidden among maple trees, and a little girl in a green coat and a mother who had hot chocolate and cupcakes waiting when I brought friends home from skating. A woman who made her house behave like a home and taught her only child that good manners were the backbone of civilization. I told him how Mama died and left me with him and the women he'd brought home until I couldn't take any more and how I'd finally left with one of them to wind up singing in third-rate hotel ballrooms. What a rotten break, baby. They have such a great start. Oh, don't be sorry. I'm a very happy woman now. I didn't mean this to sound like the memoirs of a fallen angel. You're sure there are fish down there? That winter, I knew there was no more reason for me to doubt or to fear. I knew he'd come to Santa Hilda again next January, and I'd come with him. For 46 weeks, I could live somehow, because I knew that when January came again, I'd be there. Goodbye, baby. Take good care of yourself. You too. Don't work too hard. Keep your same phone number. Don't make it hard for me to find you next year. I'll try not to. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Mr. Leslie, honey.
The note said, you told me you had pin money, but not enough for platinum pins. There was something else, too. About that, the note said, hold this for an investment. If a rainy day comes, it's nice to have an umbrella. My investment was a dress shop, something steady. That's what I needed, and that's what I got. Welcome, partner. You won't find the dress business as exciting as show business. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Do I sign here? Yeah. How do I start? Well, first off, you better get yourself some flat heel shoes. Those things will ruin you. Oh, don't worry, I will. Nine o'clock, Miss Keeler. Closing time. Oh, thanks. Mr. Pope, do you think you could find Robert E. Lee's autobiography for me? Well, no. Nobody could. Well, you mean he didn't write one? General Lee lived his life so that he had no need to explain or apologize. That's nice. That's really nice. <laughs> Will you charge this to my account? And when the Jalnik book comes in, you know, the diary of the Civil War, will you let me know? Of course. You puzzle me, Miss Keeler. Are you writing a thesis on the Civil War? That's the nicest compliment I ever had. That's all you ever read about. <laughs> you know, if you're not busy this evening, maybe you'd like to drop into the newsreel theater on the avenue. They're showing a very well done short on Matthew Brady. The photographer? Mm, an artist. Lots of his Civil War pictures. You might enjoy it. Maybe I will. On a night like this, an air-cooled movie wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Pope. Good night. Marines are used to being ready, and the zero hour means United States Marines over the side with their long-awaited chance against the Japs. Marine paratroopers renew the Corps' watchword, the first to fight. Amphibian tanks are part of the amazing equipment these sea soldiers will carry with them. The Devil Dog Drive of Bellow Woods, the magnificent fight and bravery of Wake Island. America is on the attack. Speed on, Marines. This United Nation hears your call. Forward. In Washington, the president adds another agency to the official family, the Committee for Aeronautical Production Coordination. Chosen to head up the vital CAPC, upon which rests the future of Allied air power, is one of the nation's most brilliant air minds, George L. Hendersall. Hendersall, a farm boy who wanted wings, flew in World War I and emerged to build the mighty Hendersall Aircraft Corporation, originators of the new Army experimental jet. His wife is the well-known one-time flyer, Evelyn Bronson, famed for her books on air exploration, and the daughter of the late Senator Jonas Bronson, one of the earliest exponents of air power. Both sons, William and Jonathan, are majoring in aeronautics at Cornell University. Mr. Hendersall will move the entire family to Washington to fulfill his appointment, including McDermott here, who is the son of the famous fella, and will be right back at home. War, but offensive war. Since the night Mama died, had I felt such panic, such terrifying loneliness. Now I've seen her. So what, Keeler? I kept asking myself. So her name is Evelyn, and she's a woman of distinction. So what? I'll tell you what. Evelyn's husband said to another woman, you're the best companion I've ever known. You don't even know that stuff, Shirt Hendersall, with his money and airplanes and family. You know a Mr. George Leslie, a fellow who lives in California and goes fishing. He did live in California, but now he's got a big job, a war to win. He won't be back. 
But you've got to go on living. Survivors have to find a way to survive. And you always do. Here we are, Mrs. Stelz. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy it. Good night. Good night, Miss Keeler. I'm running. Have to catch my train. You don't mind, Vivian. Before you close, you've got Miss Sims in there. King and Keeler. That's right. Come on in. When did this happen? Almost a year ago. A very attractive store. You call them shops, don't you? Is it pain? We're making ends meet. I don't like this blue, Miss Keeler. Let me try on that back lace, please. Yes. Yes, certainly. What's wrong, Vivi? I've wired, I've tried to reach you by phone, I've written. What's the matter? Don't you want to go out west this year? Is there someone else? Yes, me. I'm a businesswoman now. I can't afford to pick up and take off any time I feel like it. You feel like it? What about that black dress, please? See, I have responsibilities now. Here you are, Miss Sims. Thanks. I hope I'm not keeping you. That's a very complicated answer. Now, what's happened? I just don't know what my plans are. I may have to go to Europe, a buying trip. Well, if that's what you want to do, we can go to Europe this year. The important thing The is... important thing? Europe? California? You see, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Will you help me with this zipper? I don't think this does much for my figure. I have such trouble trying to... <gasps> oh! For heaven's sake, what are you trying to do to me? I'm sorry. It was terribly clumsy of me. It just isn't my day, I guess. No. No, I don't like this either. I'm sorry. Hand me my dress. I'm glad you came by, though. I have some business to transact with you. Business? You would have had it before this. I just didn't know where to get in touch with you. Here. Please take it. And here's a check. By this time next year, I ought to be able to return the balance. Good night, Miss Keeler. Let me know when you get some new things in. Yes, I will. Good night, Miss Everett. I didn't want diamond pins from you or money. I didn't want anything. I'm ashamed to death of the money I took from you when I first went down there. Now you're ashamed, you mean. Do you think being in business has given you respectability? Respectability? I like to think I always had that. You did. Only then you didn't realize it. You were in love with me, so you went to Santa Hilda. Has that changed? Look, it's closing time. I've had a hard day. The money's yours, and so is the pin. You're going out with me tonight, now, for a drink or, or dinner. Put those things back in the safe, and let's go. You're making it harder for me to say what I wanted to from the beginning. I didn't think I could afford it then. So I only gave you half my name. You suspected that, didn't you? Two-thirds, really. Vivian, I'm George Leslie Hendersall. One of those dollar-a-year men, only I don't work a year. I take six weeks off. But that isn't what I wanted to tell you. Because... Would you care order dinner? We'll order later. Twenty years ago, I married a woman because her family could help me. I told myself then that you had to put emotions aside to be a success. So there was no emotion in my marriage. No love. It was the biggest mistake I'd ever made. I built a trap for myself, and I didn't see any way out until that vacation with you, that first one. I didn't realize that I'd been in a trap until I found a whole new life with you. It lasted less than six weeks, but it meant more to me than all the years before. There are reasons why I haven't been able to do anything about it yet, 
pressures in my work, from my sons, I have two boys, from society. But only with you can I turn the pressures off for a while. With you, I'm George Leslie, the man I'd like to be. Can you forgive me for not having told you before? Thank you for telling me. It was just what I told myself last spring. I don't even know George L. Henderson. He was George Leslie, a fellow who lived in California and went fishing. And I needed him because he needed me so much. That year, Jim was being drafted into the army. We drank a toast to him. Jim will make a fine soldier. I hope by this time next year the war is over and he'll be back with us again. I hope we'll be back. Is there any chance that you'll have to go to? Not for very long, baby. They've got me chained to a desk. I wish there was something I could do to help. Maybe I'll entertain the troops, sing for them. That would be helping, wouldn't it, Mr. Leslie? They'd love you, too. You'd be something like the Hutchinsons. The who? During the Civil War. The Hutchinsons went around singing for the Yankee troops, only it didn't last. They had to stop. Stop? Why? The Hutchinsons were singing a lyric that Whittier had just written to the tune of one of Luther's hymns. What was it? It was pretty stirring. It went something. What gives the wheat fields blades of steel? What what's the knife for the Union's life? Something hark to the answer, slavery. That must have been dynamite in those days. Dynamite, yeah. Yes, it was. What were the men dying like they did at Stone River? Murfreesboro. Yeah. We'll be late for dinner. Mrs. Leslie. Miss Rowan, we've been looking for you. Were there any calls for me? No, Mr. McKay is trying out his ball mat. He'd like you to join us. Oh, I... How do you do? I look right. Sure. Still the first number. That's the girl's family. Isn't the baby cute? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Before we get into the next number, I'd like to explain to Miss Rowland here that this isn't our regular music. Our pianist had a job tonight, so we're just using these records. And now, the mambo. Thanks, 
you're all very kind. And now, if we can uh, get the verdict from the uh, foreman of the jury. I met you a couple of times with Gilly, um, what's her name? Miss Rowland, this is Mr. Blue. He's an agent. We have business to talk about. Wait a minute. I got business to talk to. This kid's got a lot on the ball. You didn't know who she was? One of the most popular chicks in Hollywood. Whatever happened to you anyway? You just sort of disappeared. I'm living here now. Gilly's knocking him dead. Got herself a penthouse. I don't figure you for a joint like this. How about we drop up to Gilly's for a drink? Uh, no, I'm afraid I could. Miss Rowland, you haven't met Mr. McKay's partner. Well, how about the act? Can we get to that? Now, let me have an answer, Fred, an honest one. All right, kid, the dame's okay, but no class. You got class, period. Honest enough? Maybe we showed it too soon. Maybe it needs more work. What are you trying to prove, anyways? Nine million guys a year try to break into show business because it looks like a soft touch. It isn't. You got a soft touch, your brother-in-law. Why don't you get him to open you up a men's haberdashery on the strip? Anything, kid, but don't dance. Thanks a lot, Fred. I figured it might be worth your while. Yeah, it should have been. Well, I'll see you around, kid. How do we get out of here? Right this way, Mr. Blue. Say, in case I want to give the little girl a ring later, what's the number here? Maria doesn't live here. No, no, I mean the rolling girl. What's the number? It's a long distance call from wherever you are, Mr. Blue. I guess this is a day for turndowns. I know just how you feel. Happened to you, too? Well, like the man said, that's life. What do you say we go somewhere? Have a drink, a real ball. Yes, I'll go change. better go home. Shall we? Would you like me to drive? No, I can handle it. Get in. Are you sure? Get in. drunk driver kills himself, it's not a bad day's work. I might have killed you. Are you all right now? I think so. I don't recommend that as a way to sober up. Are you sure you're sober? I'm dry. Dry as a bone, so I can't be drowning. If I'm not drowning, why is my whole life passing before my eyes? Why don't you relax? Have a cigarette. It's been quite a day, quite a day. The things I found out. Important things? Very. I have nothing to offer an audience. I have no talent. I have nothing to offer anyone. Everyone isn't an audience. You must have a lot to give a lot of people. You just have to know who and what, that's all. Hello, Nadine. Hello. Nadine. Nobody's name is really Nadine, is it? I don't know. Maybe not. My real name is Alice. Now, that's a name a guy could say. Hey, Alice, are my shirts back from the laundry yet? You couldn't yell like that at a woman named Nadine. It doesn't fit very well, does it? Nadine, 
The chauffeur's using the station wagon, so you'll have to take the town car. Now, that fits. I guess I had that in mind once. I went to a wedding last week. The bride's parents gave them twin station wagons for a wedding present. One was marked his, the other hers. I'm not kidding. That's the gang I've been trying to keep up with. You look as if you belong to the twin station wagon set. I've got 81 bucks in the bank. No, 51. I wrote a check for a bottle of Aimé Moir for my mother's birthday. That was today, too. It's been quite a day, Alice. I haven't been called Alice in four years. It sounds refreshing. You drive, will you, Alice? It's fine out tonight. Cool and kind of sweet. Would you like to walk a little? In general terms, the plan was for General Steedman to move out on the extreme left and threaten the rebels' right flank. The cavalry on the extreme right and A.J. Smith's corps were to make a grand left wheel to assault and overlap the left of Hood's position. The pivot of this wheel was to be formed by Wood. Vivi, why did you start reading all this stuff? I don't mean tonight, I mean before. It made me feel closer to you, Mr. Leslie, honey. It's a long time between years. Yes, it is. I'm a pretty shoddy guy to be doing this to you all these years. Asking you to make a life with me that's measured in weeks. No. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's a perfect arrangement. Think of all the other couples that have to lead the dull, monotonous other life. The same old faces every morning at breakfast. The same old quarrels, habits, boredom. 52 monotonous weeks of the year. Really? That's the fox and the grapes. Oh, no, it isn't really. Once in my life, I have no illusions. Here, I'm warm and alive and it's sweet. Outside, out there, I don't know what it would be. If you're happy, we're lucky. I'm lucky. If happiness is luck, Vicki, I am too. You've given me something I haven't had since I first saw a plane in the sky and began to reach for it. Peace, Vicki. Peace and contentment. Camilla was still here. You could pretend that was for her. Sometimes I'm sorry you gave Washington your number. Can't they win a war without you? He never told me, and I never asked him. It wasn't necessary, because when he came back from that phone call, I knew he'd have to leave. He was to take the plane for Los Angeles at noon. I had to wait until the next morning for a connection to New York.
Well, I guess that takes care of everything. Why don't you stay here? That hotel in the village isn't much. Oh, I couldn't, not alone. But you love the house so much. I can see the way you took care of it this year. You're quite a hand with the house, Vivi. You ought to have one. Am I, Mr. Leslie? Definitely. I'll buy this one for you. No, I wouldn't want to stay here, not without you. And we're never coming back. I know it. I just know it. Maybe when we're old and gray, I'll buy another one for you to take care of. A little house with a big porch where we can sit and rock. I guess the goodbye was tossed away pretty casually, but I had my choice between that and screaming. It was like that every time I had to tell him goodbye. Only that time, it was harder than ever. I felt something I was afraid to admit even to myself. All aboard. Mr. Leslie. Goodbye, Mr. Leslie, honey. Today, the 13th or the 14th? August the 14th. Oh, thank you. 1945. I need a vacation, honey. Maybe when you take yours this winter, I'll go too. Close the place for a night. Well, if the war really ends, maybe we can get away earlier this year. Let's pray. Here we are, Mrs. Oh, Fine. Thank you. Hey, Gene, turn on your radio. The war's over. The Japs gave up. It's all... It's all over. Please. It's over. The war's over. In a specially summoned press conference, speaking in a soft, restrained voice, President Truman told the newsmen the enemy had accepted the surrender terms. Simultaneous announcements were made by government chiefs in London, Moscow, and Chongqing. In Washington, it was announced that... Isn't this great? Would address the all over. At that time, oh, wow. So we can all calm down what a binge this town's going on tonight. <laughs> We're collecting kisses for victory, sweetheart. How about a kiss, huh? Fire away, General. <laughs> hey, well, what's the matter, sweetheart? know how to begin this, Miss Keeler. Perhaps it would be better if I just came to the point. Yes, if you would, please, Mr. Finley. I'm not only the Hendersall family lawyer, but I was also George's friend. For a long time, I was aware of his somewhat unconventional relationship with you. I can't pretend that I approved. After all, those years in California were dangerous years for George. 
if not for you. Please, why am I here? Why, why did you send for me? My instructions are to say to you, perhaps it would be better if I read it. With this money, you're expected to buy yourself a house. It is not known what sort of a house was discussed or promised. If the value of these bonds is insufficient to fulfill the promise, please state now what you would consider adequate. I'm obliged to say to you that these instructions come from someone who wishes to be known only as Evelyn. And now may I go? But you haven't determined the value of these bonds. Oh, it's more than generous, I'm sure. Thank you. Well, uh, if you will, please, just sign this, and our business is concluded. It's a release. A release? That you'll make no claims on the estate. Make no trouble. George Leslie's estate? How can you make trouble for a memory, Mr. Finley? Take this. There's a rebate on your room. You've been awfully kind, Mrs. Leslie, for a stranger. None of us are strangers, Mrs. Poole. I know what it is to lose someone you love. Here, let me take this one. You're sure you have everything, all your things? Oh, yes, thank you. Mr. McKay helped us earlier. Mr. McKay? Yes, he was going away, too, and packing his car. He drove off while we were still loading. I hope he didn't owe you any money. Oh, no. No, it's just that you would have thought... Oh, well. Goodbye, Mr. Poole. Goodbye, Mrs. Leslie. Thank you so much for your kindness. Oh, no, that's all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Poole. Leslie. Oh, good morning. Could I ask a favor of you? Surely. What is it? You certainly are beaming. You look as if you'd swallowed a gallon of sunshine. Wouldn't you if you were about to be married? Oh, no. Isn't that wonderful? You hear that, Pixie? Miss Rowland's getting married. It's time somebody did around here. I hope it's somebody awfully nice. He's the nicest person that ever walked out of a dream. Honest, if you knew Lan, you'd... Lan? Mr. McKay? Yes. Last night, we discovered we've been looking for each other all our lives. We tore ourselves away from each other at four this morning. I'm sorry we're giving up our rooms. This is our wedding day. We're driving to Las Vegas. I don't think you'll find him there, honey. What do you mean? Had he been drinking last night? You know what I told you about drinkers. When they're drinking, they're apt to say anything. But he was sober. Well, he's not there. He's packed up and gone. You can see for yourself. He'll be back. Nadine, honey. He'll be back. He's got to come back. Listen. While you're waiting, why don't you come and have a cup of coffee with me? <laughs> We're leaving right away. You don't want to forget this. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Leslie. You're a doll. If I'd remembered this, I'd have sold it along with my car and the other stuff. That's why he was up so early. Oh. Well, you better hold on to it. Everybody needs music sometime. We'll make our own. You better hurry. It's going to be 120 crossing the desert. Not for us. We've got an air-cooled cloud. Any idea where you'll be? Any place I get a job I can be proud of, like uh, driving a truck or pumping gas. Will that make you proud? It sure will. Both of us. 
Now that sounds a little silly. It's because you came in at the end and don't know the beginning. I can guess. Alice? I bet you can. I bet you know exactly how we feel. Hey, you know something? I'll bet you are an awfully pretty girl. <laughs> Before we go, do you mind if I kiss you goodbye? You kiss your bride. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. McKay. The world's going to be all right as long as we have kids like you two. Do you mind a tip from an old-timer? Be honest with each other. Give everything you've got. Don't settle for half. You gotta have it all. Marriage, kids, the works. It cost me a life to find that out. All right, Mr. McKay. I'm not a traffic cop. I can't give you a ticket, so I won't give you any more lectures. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, and thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Leslie, honey. 